It's interesting that um, this event that here in England we tend to call the Dutch Raid of 1667, it's not really remembered here, it's not really generally taught in our schools here, even those schools based in this part of the world, in North Kent, schools which know the River Medway. It was very humiliating for the Royal Navy. Um, and I suppose because it wasn't merely um, a natural event, like the fire of London and the Great Plague, which were disastrous in themselves, um, but it was an action initiated by an enemy of England, that made it extra humiliating. During the later 17th century, um, the English and the Dutch found themselves in conflict um, because of their growing empires. Um, these were not wars of conquest, uh, they were wars about trade and commercial interests. Um, so what was happening is as these two uh, emerging countries took over the empires of the Spanish and the Portuguese, they were coming into conflict all around the world and occasionally that conflict was spilling over into um, activities at home in Europe. In August 1666, Robert Holmes secured a particular victory in Terschelling on the Vlie estuary um, when he fell across a um, a convoy or a gathered group of merchantmen of about 150 ships um, burnt the fleet, burnt the whaling factories on west of Schelling and inflicted a huge economic impact on the, uh, on the Dutch nation. The Amsterdam Stock Exchange was forced to close for a week afterwards whilst they worked out what the, uh, what the cost really was. To Schelling um, certainly wound up Dutch opinion against the English. They felt that it was very unsportsmanlike to have done that. Um, but then other events happened in Britain. The uh, Great Fire of London occurred in September that year and indeed many Dutch people regarded it as being divine retribution for Robert Holmes' actions in the Vlie. After the Restoration in 1660, when Charles II became king, um, because of a period of peace, the Navy was laid up, and many men were laid off um, in order to save money. Because in fact, the English crown was virtually bankrupt at that period, and a lack of money was a terrible problem. And more than anything, the um, English wished for uh, peace and quiet in order to recover their finances. Um, they made the mistake, I think, of antagonising the Dutch and initiating the Second Anglo-Dutch War and um, when they weren't in a, really in a position of strength to do so. The main people behind the idea were uh, the uh, brothers De Witt. Um, the initial plan came from Johan De Witt, and the plan was executed by Cornelis De Witt. Uh, and he also convinced the, uh, uh, the Navy Court Martial to actually uh, go through with the plan. Why uh, Michiel de Ruiter was seen as the, uh, the big hero in Dutch culture is um, that he was the uh, commander general of the fleet responsible uh, for attacking Chatham. Johan de Witt also helped 
uh, Michiel de Ruiter to became the uh, commander general of the uh, Dutch war fleet. And he was uh, overseeing the renewal of the fleet. So another 80 stronger battleships were uh, added to the fleet. But the renewal of the fleet was also the reason uh, during the second uh, Dutch Anglo war that the Dutch were able to challenge the British war fleet and were able to, uh, to actually win uh, the major part of the sea battles that were fought during that period. I think the English knew him um, and respected him um, as an enemy. Of course, um, at the date, it was in 1667, at the date of the Dutch raid, he had already had a, um, a well-established career and had served in actions all around the world. So um, I think he was seen as um, certainly a respected enemy, but also as a kind of figurehead, um, as a, uh, an emblematic Dutch figure. The um, River Medway had become um, the major anchorage, the major home of the English Navy in the early 16th century. Um, up until that date, the Navy had been dispersed around the country um, and it took um, a considerable period of time to bring all the ships together and make them ready whenever the Navy was required. Um, it was thought that the estuary would be uh, complex enough and certainly calm enough um, to keep the ships safe and protected. Later developments in the later 16th century um, added Upna Castle to um, ensure that the ships themselves had some kind of defence against any daring attack from enemies um, of England. There was mad panic as soon as it became apparent that the Dutch were going to assault the anchorage in the River Medway. But I think for a long time the English tried to pretend it wasn't going to happen. Um, they knew the Dutch were coming. They were well aware that they were anchored in the Thames estuary. They watched while the Dutch sent a squadron up the Thames towards London and then withdrew again. And all this time, it must have been apparent that eventually the Dutch would make an attempt on the anchorage itself in the Medway. De Reuter, though, we sent five ships and there's some supporting fire ships up the Medway, um, they forced their way past Sheerness, um, where a guard ship was on duty. They destroyed the fort, and in a feat of tremendous navigation, managed to sail all the way up to Gillingham, to the point where a chain had been stretched across the river to defend the dockyard. There were uh, two guard ships placed at either end of the chain, the idea being that as enemy ships tangled with the chain, they would be blown to pieces by the cannons which were based on the guard ships. But I would imagine that always the kind of major deterrent effect of the chain was its appearance. It was supposed to look impassable. It was supposed to look intimidating and frightening. But of course the Dutch put it to the test and broke through it. In many ways a huge, huge defeat. Politically, a huge embarrassment. And at the time, I don't think anybody, if you read the diaries of people like Pepys and Evelyn, were not at all sure whether this was a raid on Chatham or the precursor to a fully-fledged invasion and London being the target. The most significant losses were the capital ships. So um, the Royal Charles, which is the English flagship, the Loyal London and the Royal James were easily the most significant ships which were lost, um, burnt or sunk, or indeed in the case of the Royal Charles, stolen. They transported it to a Hellevoetsluis, and there they decided that the depth of the ship was not efficient uh, to be used as uh, patrolling along the Dutch coast. So they actually decided to demolish the ship and he only kept the stern of the ship with the coat of arms of uh, uh, James II. And after that, the, the, the stern was exhibited. And now it hangs in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. If you think back to the 17th century, with these large ships, which powered by the wind, and how difficult, how challenging it was, even for Englishmen who knew the estuary to get up and down it safely, I just think that the English did not expect such an attack from that direction. And the fact that the Dutch were not only able to get up the river, 
but then were able to get back again, taking one of the most important English ships with them, I think astonished the English. And indeed, we know from Samuel Pepys's diary that many of the English were um, grudgingly admired the skill and the nerve with which they undertook the action. And this brought it into my mind that they managed their retreat down this difficult passage with all their fear, better than we could do ourselves in the main sea, when the Duke of Albemarle ran away from the Dutch, when the Prince was lost, and the Royal Charles and the other great ships come on ground upon the Galloper. Thus, in all things, in wisdom, courage, force, knowledge of our own streams, and success, the Dutch have the best of us, and do end the war with victory on their side.